Today I am going to deliver a lecture on part of weld joints and welding symbol. I have already discussed about different types of classification of welding process, different types of welding edge preparation, different types of joint geometry. So, you are aware about all these things that means you are aware about all the different welding processes, you are also aware about all the different types of welding joint also. Now we will see what are the different parts of a weld and how the welding symbol. So, this is the content of this present lecture. Uh, here I will discuss about different parts of a weld joint, then extra necessary information of a weld joint. E apart from this part of weld joint, what are the other necessary information required for weld joint? And here also I will discuss about what are the welding symbol, how it is look like for different types of weld joint also. So, generally it is highly essential to describe the exact joint design. So, to know the exact joint design, this different part of weld joint is highly essential. This different part of this weld joint it is highly essential, especially once you will be in industry. This special features of uh, weld joints and its elements is highly essential for designing a weld joint. So, to know about uh, this uh, different part or different element of this weld joint is high, highly essential, especially when you will be in, in industry. This part of a weld joint here, one thing you can easily be able to see in a particular weld joint, especially for bar joint, which is widely applied in industry. Generally, there you will see so many different part of a weld joints are there. Here, we almost eight different part of a weld joints are there. This is the name of that different part of weld joint. Here, you will see there is a part whose name is joint root. There is a part whose name is groove face, there is a part whose name is root face, there is a part of a weld joint that name is root edge, then another part is root opening, then another part is bevel angle, groove angle and groove ridges. So, around 8 different part of a bar joint are there. Here one thing you can easily be able to see from here here to means remembering purpose for this 8 different element name, here you can see there is 3 R, 3 general element which is start by R, 3 different element like this, this and this which is start by R. So, th there is 3 R which is started by R, another 3 element like uh, groove, phase, groove angle and groove radius also is started by uh, G. So, here another one is uh, started by B, another one is started by J. So, from there to re for remembering purpose here one thing you can uh, just for uh, uh, remembering purpose you can remember this thing in G way. They have 3 G, B is there, 3 G, B, 3 G, B this term generally easily be able to recall, but just I am telling you 3 G, B, 3 R, J are there. So, 3 G B means 3 G, the 3 element which is started by, by first or is G and 3 element of this uh, well joint are there which is started by R and rest of the thing on one element is started by B, another element is started by J. So, now this uh, about this individual element I will uh, describe in detail subsequent slides. Here first of all we should know what is joint root. Joint root it is that portion of a joint to be welded where the members are closest to each other. This is very important terms. It is that portion of a joint where the members are closest to each other. Here one thing you can easily see for bar joint, these are all related to especially for bar joint. Here in case of bar joint you can easily see if it is a, a square group bar joint, then you can see here this uh, face face or you can say weld preparation or weld edge, weld edge is closest to each other, the entire face of the weld is closest to each other. So, this is generally called joint root for this uh, for this bar joint. If it is a bevel types of joint or bevel types of edge preparation is there, if it is a bevel types of edge preparation there, then its closest portion uh, to each other are this portion. So, this portion is called joint root. Here, this closest portion is enter well joint region in case of a square bar, case of a square S preparation or a square bar generally you can see this is the closest region. So, this is called joint root. So, joint root can be a face or it can be a area or joint root can be a 
line also. When it will be a line? If, if the S preparation have 0, it can be a area or it can be a line also. It, if this region have 0 width, the here you see there is no chamfer region is there. This is a uh, line. From this figure you can easily be able to see this sometimes can be an area or sometimes can be this joint root can be a line. Here you see in this a square bar this is a area like this is a, in case of lap joint also this joint root portion is a area. In case of uh, double V or bevel angle uh, S preparation generally this joint root is a area here where there is a in case of a square here also joint root is a area. Now, but here where you see generally joint root of uh, 0 width, generally if this joint root have 0 width, here you see this joint root have 0 width, here width is 0. So, here we can see it is a line. So, here also it can be a line, this is for single V bar joint, this is for double V bar joint also it is a line. Now, this uh, uh, the other element like groove face, root face and root is. First of all, what is group phase? Group phase, it is all the surface of a member included in the group. Whatever the group, that means enter group. Group phase means all the surface area included in the group. That this is a group where both side beveling is done. So, whatever the surface area here, here, everywhere, whatever the surface area are there, this entire surface area is known as generally group phase. What is root phase? Root phase is that portion of the groove phase within the joint root. That means, root phase is the area which is at the joint root. In this region generally root phase are there. So, root phase we can draw like this way. Root phase we can draw like this way. Root phase generally whatever the surface area we get at the joint root. That means, closest to closest portion of each other region, whatever the surface area we are getting that is generally is called root face here, generally we are getting root face here. So, whatever the surface, surface uh, whatever the surface we are getting here that is generally called root face. Okay. Now, root is, root has actually it is the root face, if this root face have 0 width, if this root face have 0 width. Here you see is this root face, here this root face has 0 width. If this root face has 0 width, then this is called generally root edge. Now, bevel, it is an angular S preparation which is generally look like this. Now, bevel angle is the angle between bevel of a joint member and a plane perpendicular to the surface of the member. That means, this is a bevel and a, a plane we have to take which is perpendicular to the surface of this member is called bevel angle. So, bevel angle is the angle between the bevel of a joint member and a plane perpendicular to the surface of the member. This is called bevel angle and this S preparation is called bevel S preparation. Now, what is groove angle? Groove angle, the angle it is the total included angle, groove angle is the total included angle of the groove between two members. That means, this is the total included angle of the group between two members. That means, between two members whatever the total included angle we are getting that is called group angle, group angle. So, we got the idea about bevel, group angle and group. Now, in case of a bar joint which have a bevel S preparation and a square S preparation. In this case, what we can see here, bevel angle, here one thing you can easily be able to see here from here, that means here bevel angle and groove angle are same. So, here uh, in case of one, one piece of the plate is subjected to bevel S preparation, another piece is a square S preparation, if it is, then their case it is bevel angle and groove angle are same. Now, root opening and group radius. This is also another two uh, element of the of a well joint. Then a root opening, it is the separation between the work pieces at the joint root. That means, at the joint root whatever the separation is there that is called root opening. 
like what happens in case of a square bar joint, the root opening is the root opening is uh, this is called root opening in case of a square bar joint this is called root opening. In case of Vivel types of SP operation, the root opening is the gap between two member at joint root. This is called generally root opening. Why this root opening and other thing required generally this root opening, this Vivel angle SP operation, these are required for joint design and for is for the well joint strength requirement and for the proper fusioning and all the purpose this joint root opening different element is required in a well joint. Now a group radius, it is an arc radius of a well joint, group radius is a arc radius of an well joint which apply only to J and U group well. It is the radius used to form the shape of J or U group well this group radius is a arc radius of a well joint. Where it is applied? It is applied either J or U group of the well. Like let this J, let this is J group SP operation and let us another, another can be, it can be U group SP operation. So, here in this case, what is this group radius? In this case, group radius is the radius which generally use to make this J, this is J group S preparation, this one and here U group S preparation, group S preparation. So, here a radius R is used to form this U, this R is used, radius R is this to, to form this J group or to form the U shape to form the J shape or to form the U shape, this, this radius provided here. So, here one things you can see, you can observe here in case of J group also, here whatever the angle we are getting, this angle between this uh, two, here also you can see here this angle is called group angle, J group also this is called group angle and in case of U group, here this angle whatever the angle we are getting here, this angle is called group angle. So, now we will go to the another element of the, so now we have already discussed about different part of a well joint. Now, we will see in a, in a single, uh, in, in single bar joint what is the different part of well joint in uh, uh, total, all the part, all the uh, all the joint element now I will show in a single joint like let this is a bar joint. Here I will show you in detail about all the element of a bar joint. Now here uh, this gap between two member is called, I have already explained, is called root gap. This closest portion of this element, portion is closest portion of this element, this and this closest portion of this element, this is called generally joint root, joint root. Whatever the face we are getting here at joint root, this face is called root face. This is called top side, this is called root side. the angle between a vivel and a perpendicular plane, angle between a vivel and a perpendicular is plane is called vivel angle and the angle of two member that means this and this is called included angle, included angle, it is called included angle. Now, we will see uh, in case of a J group how it is look like. 
in case of a j group or u group what are the different element of a bar joint are there that also we will see. in case of u group or j group generally here also this is called this is called joint root now here also generally all the surface here this surface this surface all the surface is called group face here also this is called joint root in case of u group joint root this is called root gap, root gap, this is called group radius, this is called groove angle, angle, this groove angle also sometime called included angle. So, this is for bar joint for a uh, we will v types of group all the different element and this is for u group bar joint of different types of element this is called top side and this is called root side root side so this is the different part of a uh, bar joint and its nomenclature now we'll see what is the different part of a T joint also. That way, that means in case of a uh, T joint, what are the uh, if we do the welding, then what are the different part of uh, part are there? In case of a T joint, the different part have different name also. Like this, let this is a inverted T. Here, once we do the wel welding, then this T this shape of the weld is triangular in nature which I have already discussed in detail. Here the different part of this weld joint are we can describe like this from here to here this is called leg 1, leg 1 part from here to here here to here this is called leg 2 this face of the weld this is called face of the weld face of weld the perpendicular distance from this face to corner of this joint perpendicular distance from the face to this point from here to here this distance is called generally throat thickness throat thickness throat thickness and here this point and this point are this very very important point this point have a name this point is called toe of fillet weld fillet weld so these are the generally different nomenclature of a T, uh, T joint. Here generally this is from here to here. This is called leg one. This is leg two. This is perpendicular distance from face to this uh, corner point is called throat thickness, and this is called face of the weld. And two important point is this and this location, which is called toe of the fillet weld. This extra necessary information is highly essential for a uh, weld joint. For a single vivel group weld, the vivel angle and the group angle are equal. That are what I have already explained in detail. Like a single vivel angle means if one piece is viveled, other piece is a square is preparation. This is generally called sim single vivel group weld. Here whatever the welding is done, this is called single vivel group weld. Here the whatever the angle between these two member this is generally called vivel angle vivel or this is called groove angle i have already told about this thing in previous slides 
that means Vivel angle and groove angle is say, are same for single Vivel groove weld. And another things, now in case of a J or U groove, the well, well configuration is normally specify both angle and radius. Here this uh, Vivel groove, the uh, specification or configuration of this is in case of U and J groove configuration, the uh, configuration is normally specified. Once it is a Vivel, uh, Vivel group SP person, there is required to specify this well joint by angle only. But if it is a J or U group, they are both angle and radius is required to specify the well joint. This two thing is highly essential for J or U group. Once we know this angle and uh, radius of this U or J group, then what happens? Uh, if it is provided in a specification, then we can easily able to make J and U group. Now, these are also some extra information which is uh, very much essential for welding purpose like single and double sided S preparation. Generally, this single sided S preparation, one the S preparation is done one side only and this is the double sided S preparation which generally required to prepare in both side of the weld joint. Now, where this single side welding is required to apply and where this double side welding is required to apply that we should know. This single side S preparation is required to apply uh, for thinner section, especially if the plate thickness is uh, thin type, thin type uh, th th thinner section. If there is especially the plate thickness, if it is thin, then their single side S preparation is sufficient to weld properly. That means, weld mat material deposition will be properly if the uh, weld plate thickness is single and if the, they are will made. Uh, single types of S preparation. And another important things also is required here, uh, sometimes for little bit thicker section also uh, can be required to uh, put single sided of S preparation because they are if the access from both side is restricted for double sided welding, what are the thing required where generally we have to first do the welding on top side, to do the welding on bottom side we have to invert the plate. To invert the once we go for invert the plate, if the welding structure is very heavy, the which is very difficult to invert, then in that case also if for uh, heavy section generally sometimes though there is required double sided S preparation, but what happens there we can do some special care by putting single sided S preparation. So, what we got from here single sided S preparation normally used for thinner material, thin section and we should keep it in mind, it uh, this single sided S preparation also require where both side is restricted. Th that means, only we can do the welding from one side, they are generally single sided S preparation is used. V bar joint is more simple to prepare or A square joint is more simple to prepare for single type of S preparation. This U and J group little bit complicated compared to this single U or uh, this single V, uh, single V or single V well group uh, S preparation. Here single V bar joint side by side uh, S square uh, S preparation bar joint is more simple to prepare compared to J or U group S preparation. Now this double sided S preparation normally made for thicker material or where generally access from both side is unrestricted. So, that means we can invert the plate as per our requirement very easily. So, what happen and if the plate thickness is little bit thicker, uh, little bit more thick, then there generally we should use double sided S preparation. Now, we will see what are the material, oil material required, these are also some if we do the single S preparation then what are the effect we can get, if we do the uh, double sided S preparation then what are the effect we can get uh, from uh, in a welding structure. In case of single types of Vivel or single types of V group S preparation, we do the welding like this. In case of single V group bar joint, once we do the welding, we get a bit shape which is well bit shape which is look like this. But in the same plate thickness, if we do here double S preparation, double S preparation, then here how the welding is required, uh, how the well bit shape will look like, the well bit shape will look like 
this is one side, this is another side. So, generally this is well deposition pattern for double sided, this is well deposition pattern for single sided SP pressure. From here one thing we can easily be able to see here in case of single SP pressure the material required to do the welding is the material required to do the welding is generally let us this is 1, 2, 3 that this is 4, let this is your 1 and let this is your 2. So, whatever the this 1 and 2 well pass whatever the material is required here almost twice of this double sided S P person. So, in case of single sided S P person the well material required is almost double the double sided S P person well material. And here lot of advantage also is there in case of double sided S P person that I will explain in later. Generally a double V bar may require the require the joint to be turned over to complete the other side and access both side of the I have already explained in detail. So, here just I am giving you some extra information in case of single sided SP person for doing welding in same thickness place here generally the weld material required is almost twice than the double sided SP person uh, weld material. Now, advantage and disadvantage of J and U group. J and U group S P person give a more uniform and even distribution of oil material throughout the depth of the joint and here reduce the distortion and residual stress. How it is that I will tell uh, once I will draw this I will explain in detail. This is the advantage and disadvantage of J and U group. Here one thing we can observe that in case of J and U group. once we do the welding then the well well bit shape look like this well bit shape look like this so so here uh, now uh, we will go what is the advantage and disadvantage of j and u group in case of j and u group once we do the welding let this is a j group welding and let this is a U group welding. Now, once we do the welding in J group or U group, then one thing we can easily be able to see from here. If it is a J group welding, here if we will do the welding, the weld bit shape will look like this. Here also the well bit shape will look like this. Here I have, I have shown here little bit bigger way, but this thing generally bigger way I have shown here. So, here one thing you, you can see this uh, black color one generally represent the well bit shape geometry. Now, so the advantage of J and U group here the generally well deposition is through the enter thickness is uniformly distributed. One thing you can easily be able to see in case of J or U group distribution of welding throughout the thickness of the plate is uniformly distributed. Due to this uniform distribution of weld material in case of J or U group uh, we get less distortion and here also we get less residual stress which generally reduce the uh, distortion as well as here reduce the residual stress. Here this double J S P person or this U or J S P person also sometimes require both side also. Now here why this uh, due to this uniform distribution of oil material why the uh, distortion is less that also we should know. Let us in case of a welding once we do the welding once we do the let us this is a V, v well group bar joint here how the deformation is taken place in a bar joint or angular deformation is taken place in a bar joint that we should know. And once we do the welding the weld bit shape is look like this. Here this plate along this plate thickness there is a neutral axis. So, if we consider about this neutral axis here we are getting top of the neutral axis we are getting this much of material 
this of this mass of material and bottom of this uh, bottom of this uh, bottom of this neutral axis we are getting this mass of material. See here one thing we can easily be able to observe in case of top side the well material or molten material is more compared to this bottom side one. Due to this uh, difference of molten material about neutral axis the forces once it once this molten material solidifies, once this molten material solidifies, this molten material creates a sinkage force about this neutral axis. Like what happens this top uh, molten material on its solidify generally it creates a sinkage force which lets the magnitude of sinkage force is F1 due to this volume of molten material uh, sink. Now let us bottom side molten material on its sink let this create another force let this is F2 in this direction. Now if this F1 and F2 this F1 and F2 depends on what this volume of molten material solidification. If the volume of molten material solidification will be more then this sinkage force will be more if the volume of molten material uh, solidification is less then this sinkage force will be less. So here one thing you can easily be able to see uh, that here this top side molten material more than this bottom side molten material about neutral axis. So here generally F1 is far far greater than F2. So due to this variation of sinkage force about neutral axis top and bottom side what happens this plate is bent this plate is bent like this because this due to this top variation of top sinkage force where the force magnitude is more along that direction this plate will bend. So due to this there uh, is generated a angular deformation that means this much this types of angular deformation is taken place in a welding structure. Now this welding welding angular deformation or distortion this theta value will be more if this variation of molten material on top side of neutral axis and bottom side of neutral axis is more then they, then this uh, theta value is also more increase. But in case of this J or U group one thing you can easily be able to see in case of J or U group about neutral axis generally neutral axis for a bar giant it pass through almost middle section of the thickness of the plate. So here one thing we will be able to see due to this uniform distribution of oil material through the thickness of the plate due to this uniform distribution of oil material here about neutral axis the top side and bottom side molten material deposition is almost same. So here whatever the top sink is for F1 and F2 generated this F1 and F2 is almost equal to F1 and F2 is equal. In this U group also almost due to this uniform distribution of well material deposition this top side and bottom side here also is also almost F1 is equal to F2. Due to this uh, less variation of F1 and F2 or you, you can we can say here due to this uh, F1 and F2 almost uh, same uh, that is why here generally welding deformation is almost nullify here, here welding distortion is uh, very uh, small. And due to this even distribution of well material here the residual stress also this residual stress also uh, generate less. But the main disadvantage of this types of SP person U or J group SP person here to make this J shape or U shape this types of SP person to make this radius this shape costly machining operation is required. And another defect can occur due to this U or J SP person that is suffer from lack of side all fusion. So as this side all is almost a state in nature. So here this molten metal droplet which ever deposited in this region which ever it is generally it is deposited in this region there is a chance of lack of fusion of this is this is there is a chance of lack of fusion. This is the main drawback of the uh, U and J group well welded joint. But the it has uh, advantage is here less residual stress less uh, well material and less distortion is occur in case of J and U group as preparation. Now here some other information is also required that is root gap versus the root opening. Once we will go for root gap versus root opening here one thing we should know why root gap is required to put. 
root gap is uh, required to put for electrode accessibility and for proper welding fusion. With lesser groove angle, this root opening should be more. How it is just I am giving you an example. Let us for, for a 30 degree groove angle, for a 30 degree groove angle and let this is for a 90 degree groove angle. So, for a 30 degree groove angle generally whatever the root opening we should provide that should be let root opening here let us R1 and let us here the root opening is R2. So, what it is called if the groove angle is less then this root opening should be more that means here R1 is greater than R2 because if here then the group angle is less, so here the group angle is more. So, here better accessibility of electrode, here whatever the electrode we are providing here, it can be easily accessible. But in this case, this electrode because here there is a gap between this phase, this phase, so, so better accessibility is required though the if the root radius root gap is less also. But in this case, for better accessibility of the electrode, this root gap should be more. So, what it is called for better electrode accessibility and better fusion, this root gap is increased with decrease of groove angle. So, here generally I am giving you a fill that means what should be the root opening for 30 degree angle for a particular thickness for 90 degree. Like if, we, if for a 30 degree for a particular thickness plate for a 30 degree angle if the root opening is uh, 8 mm, let us just uh, if, if the root opening is 5 mm the root opening is 5 mm, then uh, we can reduce this root opening here is almost uh, 2 mm. That means, here this root opening we can reduce from 5 mm to 2 mm. That means, almost uh, 2 to 3 times uh, reduction of root opening is possible by uh, increasing in the angle around 2 times to 3 times from these things we can easily observe. So, from here we can get a very interesting idea that okay, the higher the root, uh, higher the groove angle, lesser should be the root opening. And uh, why it is required that I have already explained in detail. Now, here another extra information which is very much essential to know that is generally backing bar or backing stiff. We should know what is backing bar or backing stiff. Generally, a backing bar or a backing stiff is used mainly to support the root. Generally, in this root, I have you know about every element of a welded joint. So, here the root is this thing to support this root, this backing bar or backing stiff is used. Backing bar or backing stiff is used, stiff or bar is used. Now, when this is called backing bar and when this is called backing stiff, that we should know. This backing bar or backing stiff we can use in a feather like SP personal. What is feather like SP person means if the joint root have zero thickness. That means if the joint root root face have uh, no root face is required. Here you see this uh, there is no root face. Then that is called generally in feather like SP person. So in case of feather like SP person, it can also allow for a they generally by providing uh, this uh, backing strip or backing bar, we can eliminate the root face. That means, in a feather like feather like SP person also, this backing strip or backing bar can be used. Now, what is the difference between this backing strip and backing bar? Backing strip forms the part of the weld. That means, after welding, it also will be a part of that weld joint. That is, it is not replaceable backing strip. That means, backing strip is not replaceable, but backing bar which is removable. That means, it is recyclable. That means, we after welding we can remove that backing bar from that uh, from the root and we can reuse it. So, this is called backing bar. So, backing strip is a, is a form, is a backing strip forms part of the weld, but backing bar is usually removable which can be recyclable also. So, this king strip and backing bar generally used to prevent burn through also because if this this will not provide this backing strip will not provide there is a chance to come out this molten material through the gap of this root through the gap of this root. 
So, so to prevent this burn through this backing strip or backing bar is required to use. Here another important extra information is required that is called transitioning. This transitioning is a very important part where we use two different plate thickness. Generally transitioning is required to use where generally we use two different plate thickness to be welded. There generally we use transitioning. Here one thing we can see that transitioning is a very important thing is transitioning is carried out to reduce the wall thickness on a joint that has two different plate or five thickness to match the thickness of the thinner plate to match the thickness of the thinner plate. Reduction of this thickness that means this mass of thickness we have to reduce here. How to reduce that thickness that we can that idea we can get from this transitioning. This reduction of this material, which is the material we are redu uh, removing from these things that we can remove by pneumatic bevelling machine or this can be removed by grinding machine. This transitioning, how to apply this transitioning that we should know. This transitioning from where we should start this removal of material, what should be this length of this, what should be the length from where we should start our uh, tapering that means what should be tapering of or removal of this material that we should know. That idea we can get from this uh, transitioning term. Here one thing we should uh, know if this thickness reduction is T that let us say this thickness reduction is T then this, this length from where we should start transitioning should be minimum 40. 40 uh, 40 length. That means we should start this uh, tapering from 40 length ahead, ahead from the joint region. 4 times of T uh, beyond this well location. So, why it is required? That also we should know. This transitioning may be applied inside or outside. That means this removal of material sometimes we can use inside or this removal of material sometimes we can use outside also. In case of pipe welding this transitioning always used inside, but in case of bar weld like here this is a two plate which we are going to in case of two plate which have different thickness we are going to weld generally here transitioning is done like this top side and bottom side. So, top inside and outside we can do the welding this let this is outside this is inside. Sometimes this transitioning can be done let this two plate to plate which is placed in this way. In this case bottom side there is no thickness reduction is required, but here there is a requirement of thickness. So, here transitioning is required to do only one side only. So, we have to remove this portion of the material from here. So, what should be the length of this portion of the material? The this portion of the material this length should be at least 4 times of the thickness of the material removal, 4 times of the thickness to be reduced this length should be 4 times of the thickness to be reduced. Now, here another one thing you can observe that why this transitioning is required. Transitioning is required to increase the fatigue life of a structure. If there is a abrupt change of a structure like what happens here two different thickness plate are there and if we do the welding here, here you see one thing you can easily be observed there is a abrupt change is there. So, if there is a abrupt change, so if you do the welding here there is a chances of stress concentration. You know this thing uh, that means uh, where there is a abrupt change there is a chances of a stress concentration. So, if there is a there is a stress concentration, so what happens there is a chances of fatigue crack. So, and so due to this fatigue crack. Uh, there is a chances of failure of the structure uh, with less fatigue life. Now, if we do transitioning over here like two different plate thickness, transitioning if we do the removal remove the material and if we do the welding here this abrupt change will not be there. If we do the welding here, here the abrupt change will not get here if we do the welding here in this region if we do the welding here generally abrupt change will not be there because we are removing this uh, material and which makes a tapering that means slow change of here generally slow change of shape is there, slow change of shape is there due to this thing here abrupt change is not occur. 
So, here stress concentration will be less. So, if the stress concentration will be less, here we will get more fatigue life and there is a chance of less uh, fatigue crack growth. Now, there is a term used in transitioning that is called 1 in 4 a taper. In case of a transitioning, 1 in 4 is recommended for maximum fatigue life. Generally, a taper of less than 1 in 4, this always keep it in mind, less than 1 in 4 is recommended for maximum fatigue life. What does it means? What I have already explained, 1 in 4 is recommended means, let this is a plate thickness, this is one plate this is another plate, 1 in 4 means let this thickness reduction is let us t, this we I have to reduce, that means this I have to reduce. So, this uh, radius reduction or thickness reduction I have to make, I have to do. So, do to do this thickness reduction from where we should start beveling or removal of matter, to, uh, the removal of material we should start from a distance removal of this material we should start from a distance which is at least 4, 40 beyond this region. That is why here it is put like this that means we should start our this beveling or you should start our removing this material portion, this portion of material then this portion of material we should start at a distance 4 time of this reduction of thickness we should start this length should be 4 times of the thickness reduction T. That is why a taper of less than 1 in 4 recommended for maximum particular. That means, if it is, if this length is minimum 4 times the th uh, thickness reduction T, then we will get maximum fatigue strength that we, that is observed experimentally also. That is why this transitioning is a very important part once we go for doing welding in case of two different thickness plate. This types of transitioning is made for uh, uh, two different thickness plate. This is common types of transitioning like uh, this transitioning uh, can be done like this here uh, first tapering is done after that here then early welding is uh, done. This transitioning can be one side, this transitioning can be both side also. Here you see this side thickness reduction is required to do and similarly this side also thickness reduction is required to do, this side. That this is, uh, so, what happen both side once we go for both side thickness there are beveling can be reduced because if we do from both side this thin thickness reduction from both side wide generally one uh, each side this uh, thickness reduction will be less. So, we can uh, start this uh, tapering from less length if we do it for uh, both side. Uh, transitioning. Now, this transitioning here also can be done this uh, transitioning after doing we can do the welding operation here, welding here this is for both side here also we can do the welding here this uh, here and here we did the welding. So, these are the things generally commonly used transitioning uh, process in case of two different plate thickness.